guys i hope you are doing well welcome back to my youtube channel my name is mpo and i'm so very happy to be back here and actually very excited about what we get to speak about today because i will be sharing very basically how you can become a chartered accountant this video was inspired by emails that i've gotten linkedin messages and even comments in some videos about uh, from people wanting to know how you can become a chartered accountant wanting to know what the journey and process is like and i realized that i may have been jumping a gun we've had many conversations about what it's like to be a ca some of the things that you get to do some of the work that you get to do but we haven't necessarily spoken at a basic level about how you can get there so this will be helpful if you are one trying to be a ca or if you have friends family siblings who would be interested in the qualification but don't know how to go about it because let's face it many of us don't have people we could look up to in our immediate circles who actually have studied some of the things that we want to study i personally didn't have one so if you think you could benefit from this video to stick around now before we get into how to become a chartered accountant i actually want to touch very briefly about what a chartered accountant is and in south africa it is accredited and regulated by the south by the south african institute of chartered accountants and there's a whole training program that taika wants you to go through to actually end up saying i'm a ca sa um how i can answer what being a chartered accountant is i'll try to give you guys ideas of some of the works that you can do as a chartered accountant when you're training to be a chartered accountant, you're training to be some sort of business leader. You may be training to be a CEO or a leader executive one day in large corporations in South Africa or even internationally. Secondly, you may be training to help businesses make decisions. And you basically do this through recording of transactions and reporting those transactions and even being the one that makes decisions based on the financial transactions, financial information that you have reported. And then the last bit that I would also want to touch on is that as a chartered accountant, you also one of the best people to start a business. And that's because this qualification trains you in business, it trains you to run large corporations. So all of those controls, all of those processes that are involved in running a successful business, you can then apply that to your small business. Okay, how does one become a chartered accountant? How do I study something that'll make me a leader in business, that'll make me an expert in various number of fields that'll make me successful in running my own business one day how do i get to getting there there's three steps that i want to touch on the first step is right even before you go into university it involves picking the right subjects um, to ensure that you can actually qualify to study to becoming a chartered accountant later so you need to make sure that you've got pure maths and that you have english as a subject okay so i want us to look at some of the requirements of certain universities and what you see here is the university of johannesburg wants you to have gotten a 60% for maths and um, a 50% for English. Now let's look at other universities, let's say University of Victoria. UP actually wants you to have 60 for English and 70 for maths as well as an overall APS score of 34. So you just need to make sure that you study the right subjects and that you pass really well if you want to improve your chances of getting into a good school with good prospects of actually passing your board exams. UP has actually been leading in the board exams over the past few years. So if you wanted to go to UP, you must at least have 70% for maths, right? So if you get those marks, then you can go on to study to be a chartered accountant in university. And that's the second step ensuring that you pick the right university and that you pick an accredited qualification. SACA has a whole list of qualifications that they have accredited um, from different institutions and I've linked it in the description box. So go have a look at it and make sure that the university and the qualification that you apply for to study um, actually is accredited by SACA because the last thing you want is to actually get to the end of your qualification or your studies only to find out that the university, the course or the university that you picked is not not accredited by SICA. All right, so now what happens after you've picked the right institution is accredited by SICA. The, the qualification that you want to study is a good one. Uh, you've hopefully made it to one of the best universities that improve your chances of passing your board exams later on. You then will have to be studying for three years your undergraduate degree, after which you will do another year, a postgrad year for your CTA. During this year, you will specialize in subjects such as financial management, financial accounting, auditing and taxation. So it's actually four majors that you deal with 
from your third year on and on on to your honors hopefully you pass the record time and even if you don't it's fine many of us don't pass the record time but hopefully now you've passed after four years and you are ready to start your articles okay so now we are on to the final stretch which is the training contract this is a three-year process and there's basically three or four different types or different groups here you have people who train at audit firms you have people who train at banks or other commercial institutions such as ShopRite and the likes. And then you have people who train at the Auditor General or other government institutions. All of this, there's not really a right or wrong answer. It depends on what you see for your career and where you want to go. I did my training at an audit firm and I am currently working at a financial institution at a bank. So usually when you go to an audit firm, you're able to go to the other financial institutions and commercial and all of that. I'm actually not too sure about going from a bank to being an audit manager. I think that could be a bit tricky. But yes, so you, so you do your training, uh, you pick the firm that you want to go to, you pick the industry that you want to go to. And there's three things that need to happen here. The first thing is you pass your ITC or your initial test of competence. Uh, you do some time and then you pass your APC, your assessment of professional uh, competence. And then you must do 3,600 hours of core working experience. Uh, experience in the competencies that Taika wants you to have at the end of the day. The competencies that make you a capable CA. There's other things that happen and hopefully few tears for you and you get to make lifelong relationships as well and finally that's it seven years later you get to qualify as a chartered accountant and you are eligible to register as a casa so well done to you the world of business then awaits you opportunities are really plenty you can work in south africa or overseas and you get to earn a very very decent salary that's it you guys i hope you enjoyed this and obviously this was a very much standard way if you're looking for other ways i did make a q a video um and where i answered also how to become a ca i also did touch on some of the non-standard ways of becoming a ca so if you want to check that out do go check that out but otherwise i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was useful let me know in the comment section where are you in your ca journey um, did you find this helpful? Do you want other content similar to this? And what specific question do you have? Um, until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.